Congress may have some economic assistance for farmers on the way. Plus, we're going to talk about the latest WASD data and a lot more on this episode of the Arkansas ICAST, which starts right now. You're listening to the Arkansas AgCast, where we discuss the latest news, trends, and issues impacting Arkansas farmers and ranchers. Our show is brought to you by the Arkansas Farm Bureau Federation and hosted by Jason Brown and John Nickman. Oh my goodness. Happy Thursday, fellas. Yes, welcome to another week of the Arkansas Ag Cast. <laughs> He seems so excited to I be am, here. I am. As always. My goodness. Uh, Couldn't do it without me. So yeah, That's true. I hope you don't go anywhere. Uh, Got nowhere also, to be. Uh, <laughs> it smells better in here than it did no, last week. I thought you were like making a reference to me or something. No, smell buddy. You smell good all Thank the you. time. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the smells are, or lack thereof is much more pleasant in here in the basement of the Farm Bureau building than... Uh, the barn. Speaking of, even though I did enjoy the the time we spent in there, yeah, 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 it was pretty cool. Speaking of our oh. scents, remember last week we established that we were show animals and we're yeah. well groomed. <laughs> yeah. I, I just can only assume that we smell nice as part of that. Um, yeah, my I, I will say my truck smelled like wh- whatever that is they spray on those animals before they go. It still does. Is it paint or is it? Oh yeah, yeah. You mentioned that black. Spray. And I came home. My wife was like, "What does that smell?" I was like, "What?" She's like, "You smell strong." <laughs> I was like, "Strong." Oh, do you like that? Is that a good thing? <laughs> yeah. So that jacket got washed. Uh, my truck still kind of smells like a barn. Does it? Um, but you know, we're gonna go with it. I didn't really have the barn smell. It was just whatever that spray can is. Of yeah. Whatever. I don't know. If somebody knows. Please tell me. I'd like to know what that is. Yeah, somebody somebody will fill us in, mm-hmm. set us set us on the straight and narrow. Yep. Uh, yeah, so we were at the uh, State Fair last week. If you saw the episode, good on you. Uh, your check is in the mail. Uh, if you did not, I uh, highly recommend you going to YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or wherever you like to get uh, content or the ad cast. You can even listen if you want, but it's much more entertaining as a watch. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and go check it out. We, uh, it's been pretty popular, honestly, uh, as far as views go. Um, so, and there's a lot to it. We, we, number one, we broadcast the show from a, a cattle barn at the fair. We did. Uh, number two, and the, all that came with that, including being cold, lots of noises, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. lots of sights in the background, uh, all that stuff. And then you took the second half of the show into your own hands i did i did i ran off left y'all behind yeah took all the glory for myself (laughs) you did (laughs) Uh, but uh yeah you'll you'll get to if you haven't already watched it you'll get an opportunity to uh see firsthand kind of some of the kids that are showing animals what mm, they're showing mm -hmm. and names and you may see a lot of my ignorance when it comes to showing animals yeah uh (laughs) and uh some other questions that i just went right over my head uh, in the heat of the moment, so as like they, uh, knowing who the basketball coach at yeah, the University yeah, of Arkansas yeah, is, yeah, just exactly. That is the exact <laughs> example that I still have not erased from my memory. You, sleep you did us proud, yeah, yeah, I'm sure I did. So, a cow taking a shower, yeah, uh, that's true. At one point, mm-hmm. um, and I really wanted you to get in there for that part. You didn't, but um, no, I didn't. But afterwards, it would have been warranted. Yeah, you know, it could have been, been useful. Couldn't it? <laughs> it could have. Apparently, if you turned home, uh, smelling. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, we we got so close to smell a vision, you know, <laughs> with that video. <laughs> you no, know, we we could have really had a full uh, encompassing yeah. experience for our fans. That's right. Well, uh, all that is to say, go back and watch that episode of the AdCast, and and not just the AdCast. We, we put out a video every day from the State Fair. Um, you can find that. Uh, we did a, a Farm Bureau takeover on The Vine, which is THV's uh, uh, morning mid-morning show. Yep. And that was last Tuesday. 
You can see all that on their website. I mean, there's a lot of content out there that was created at the at the state fair um, that is just there for the for the watching. Um, so go go check that out. So see who uh, with the state fair and everything we did? How mm-hmm. many days did you do down there? Oh, I got pretty lucky. I only did three days. The three? AgCast was the third day for me. Brian? Yeah, I was there two days. So I was three, too. I did not so get to go to the Cell of Champions. Um, that I don't know. I took that would have made four days. Yeah, I took a little tone down there. I guess the at the day we uh, shot the podcast. Yeah, so you but that was in the times. same day. Four does times. Count? Yeah, I think it does. I'll, I'll take it. I'm the winner. Yeah. Yeah, it it never go. fails. I set out every year to get down there more days than mm-hmm. I do, and just the way projects fall, yeah, yeah I'm always here. So. I know it's you are. Um, it's 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 tough to get down there, but it when is. you do, it's really enjoyable. And it the is. weather is like the weather that we had. Yeah, for the fair, it was nice. I mean, it's it's just really a treat to get out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I read in the paper this week that uh, over half a million people. Went through the admission, wow. uh, the entrance. Really? You know, that doesn't count us coming in the back door with media passes or yeah. whatever that may be. Yeah. Over a half million people. Yeah. Wow. So that's, that's more than I would have thought. Pretty incredible. Well, they always say the attendance is tied to weather. You know, mm-hmm. and when you see a weather, uh, weather like it was for that week, I mean, that's, you know. Wasn't one of the days that week a federal holiday where the school's out? It was. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know that all schools were out. Okay. Um, but yeah, Figured they that would probably sell them out. Yeah. yeah. And then they bring some schools bring their students out there mm-hmm. too. You know, yeah. so there's that too. Uh, oh, I did see somewhere, you know, we've talked about this before, not associated with Farm Bureau whatsoever, but that high dive show. Yeah. And how interesting that is. Yeah. Somebody, I don't know what it was. I was going to look for the uh, Vine stuff on their website. They attached a camera to the very top platform. Oh, wow. And show they have a video of the guy getting up there, turning upside down on his on his hands, and going into the pool from whatever that height is. And it, like, turned my stomach watching just the video of it. You know, it. even if I was physically capable of doing that, <laughs> I still wouldn't do it. No. <laughs> Zero interest no. in climbing up to that. We couldn't get you to ride that. One I, ride. I'm not even going to get on the teacup. Like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> now, when it comes time for you guys to do a trip down to Orlando, you'll have to you'll have to suck it up. Yeah, I have done that once. Yeah. Now, I, I feel like there's a little bit more safety there, liability, oh, you know, than uh, like just a yeah. drive through carnival that is <laughs> on its way to the next fair on a trailer. Now, listen, I'm sure those things are safe or they wouldn't be there. But I do, I do agree with you that a stationary uh, ride is there would an association be, out there that regulates these? I don't. I'm not going to get into that. That's not our See, business. That's, that, that's uh, uncertain. I think that's a good call. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you guys know? So today is October 24th. Mm-hmm. Don't be. I didn't know that. I didn't know it's quit. October 24th. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I put this stuff in here for me, and then he started. Uh-huh. Oh, there's something uh-huh. special about October 24th? Yeah. Okay. It's a national holiday. Oh, Speaking oh, of holidays. Right. <laughs> Is it yeah. one of those marketing holidays? Well, one of the ones that you <laughs> particularly don't care for. Uh, it's National Bologna Day. National Bologna oh, Day. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I thought. How appropriate for this uh yeah, we're talking about safe. Food. <laughs> yeah, well, the safe there's a lot of ag, there's a lot of ag products in yeah. bologna. <laughs> Maybe more than we could count. Yeah, uh, honestly, uh, no, really. I thought you know it's been a while. I mean, we talked about fair food, mm-hmm. but it's been a while since we talked about any other kind of food. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be doing this. Y'all know, I mean, Halloween's next week. We'll probably right. have something food related with that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanksgiving on the horizon. We've been working to make sure we're going to have Arkansas data yep. in the national Thanksgiving cost dinner cost survey mm-hmm. this year. So yep. I'm very excited for us to present that. Yeah. Yep. And then of course the hall, you know, Christmas. I mean, we'll definitely be talking about food there. But it's been a while, maybe since Labor Day, since we talked about food. But it sounds like today. We're going to talk about bologna. Brief, <laughs> briefly, we are. Um, so here's my challenge. Mm. Whatever order you want to go in, 
Mm-hmm. Either of you. Mm-hmm. Tell me your build build us the bologna sandwich of your dreams. Oh man. And if you don't eat bologna, that's fine. Don't tell us. Well, Just see, that's pretend. the problem. I can't remember the last time I ate bologna. So. <laughs> uh, I mean, okay, well, if you don't eat bologna, I guess there's, you know, not much you could say. I have eaten bologna. Do I eat sure. it? I don't. I definitely don't eat it on the regular. Sure. So, I mean, fried bologna sandwiches are good. Okay. Yeah. So. Cheese? Yes. White bread? Texas toast? Bun. In, a, in a former life, yes, white bread. Right, in a former life. It's, 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 I can't tell you last time I ate a piece of white bread either. <laughs> the last time I got stuck to the gonna, roof of your mouth. Nobody's going to hold you guys down and put uh, this look, sandwich in listening. your mouth. Don't, look, don't, don't. it's bologna, white bread, all that yeah. stuff. Delicious, really. Um, not sustainable. Does not us. agree with me. <laughs> does right. not agree with me. I understand. Uh, mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what I, do you think? You know, there's... There's the the purists out there. It's just a slab or a slice of a bologna, uh-huh. cheese, maybe some mustard and white bread, and that's it. Uh huh. I get that. But if you're really, if I'm gonna take the time to go out of my way and eat bologna, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, well, uh, it's gonna be a thick cut fried bologna sandwich mm-hmm. on okay. either Texas toast or just a, like a toasted hamburger bun. Yeah, lettuce, tomato, cheese, oh. mayonnaise, maybe a little mustard. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. I will, I will say thick this cut. If I'm gonna thick yes, show, show speaking us. of thick, yeah. show us. If I'm gonna fight through the heartburn, give me the heartburn. Like, like show how thick this. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Show yeah, us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh boy, that's a yeah. that's somewhere a between dip. like a quarter inch and a half and a, inch. Yeah, that's okay. a, yeah, that's a that's size a bologna steak. Yeah, so, yeah. But yeah, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna get it at some place like a local like uh-huh. hogs meat market mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At mm-hmm. some place where I know that I'm seeing it cut there because I I can get it thicker. Yeah. So yeah, and, and we've done right. that before. Now, yeah. now you, Jason, on the it's other hand, it's a splurge hand, item. It is for sure. It is hundred percent. You yes. you go the extra mile with bologna. I do. Uh, you, y'all probably heard me talk about this before. Bologna many, effort. Many years ago, uh, I started cooking uh, barbecue bologna, mm-hmm. and uh, it doesn't matter what I, I could cook: ribs, brisket, pork shoulder. What it doesn't matter if. People keep coming back and asking for that uh, smoked bologna. Yeah. So I've just, it's just kind of a thing I do. I make it fairly frequently. So I would start with, yes, the smoked bologna. Mm -hmm. But here's what I always tell people to do when I gift them one of these, which I've brought to you before. I think that was the last time I ate bologna. I always tell them, cut a thick, you know, a thick slice, probably probably more close to the quarter inch than half inch. Heat up your cast iron. And flip that thing a couple of times and get it going. All right. Then I want to go Texas toast, cheese, cheddar, or American. Your pick. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, American. Say, I'll say American just for the sake of yes. conversation. Mayo. Mm. That's it. No pickles? No, no, <laughs> not a but. Ve- and I, hey, look, I like vegetables. I, I do everything on my cheeseburgers and all that. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm a no. It's a no go on the bologna. Gotcha. You got to. So, that's yeah. Okay. Got to keep it simple. You know, now that you say that, I think that was the last time I had bologna. You brought it in. Brought it in. It was the yeah, smoked bologna, said, and yeah, it was yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good. So how do you um, when when frying the bologna? How do you combat the the stickage. bologna from no rising up in the middle and not cooking in the middle? You know well, what I'm saying? Thickness is the first. Do you just put slices on the outside of it? Do you put a hole in the middle of it? So oh, that's a, a good middle? question. I'm I'm going back to my really like being a Do you kid put a, days put in the a microwave. Press on top of it? In the microwave, well, you know, you, microwave it always bologna. Turned, no, I'm saying when we were like little kids, we would make those, and they would it would always turn into that cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The slits probably. If mm-hmm. I was making that, yeah. <clears throat> you ever had an egg on your fried bologna sandwich? Yes. Not opposed to that yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah. I, I return to my bologna statement. <clears throat> I okay. think a lot of people are rolling their eyes because they're like, man, y'all analyze this stuff way too much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've got things we want to One of these days we'll ask the question, how do you make a peanut butter jelly sandwich? Oh. A buddy of mine t- asked this question in yeah. a group one time. It was mind-blowing. Yeah. My, it is. 100% it will be different, and people will have very strong feelings they about will. it. They will. We'll come back to that. We'll they do will. that a different day. Okay. But it is mind-boggling. And he he... He got the question in a professional development, like in in a corporate setting. Yeah. 
to as a proof point for something. Yeah. And uh and yeah, it's it's a it's a exercise in social tendency. You, th- you think it's like a left brain, right brain kind I of thing? I think exercise? it is. I think it is. <laughs> I think it's safe to say we're very particular Sorry. about our foods. Yes. So I think it I think it is. It, it gets even more particular when you're blindfolded. <laughs> <laughs> It's, One of us it's would weird. know. It's very weird. So if you're watching as we as we move on and get down to business here, if you're watching or listening, uh, comment, call us, email us, mm. text us. Tell us how uh, you uh, – tell us what your perfect bologna sandwich would be. Cause I'm, please, please do. I, I think that would be very entertaining. Well, if we, get bet, a wild, if we get a wild one, I bet you better believe we're going to talk about it. I bet there are a lot better ways to eat bologna than we do. I, I bet you're yeah. right. I bet – oh. The, what's that movie? Uh, where the, the bologna, is it bologna cake? Uh, Sweet Home disgusting. Alabama. Yeah, seen I've that seen that movie? movie. Yeah, she she announces she's getting married, and of course her mom's like, "Well, bring out the bologna. Is it bologna cake or bologna loaf? <laughs> I don't know." <laughs> but it, it, it looks probably... like a layered cake with bologna and like mayonnaise. Oh God! Oh, what is it? Oh. You'll have to look it up. I know bologna love maybe that'll hey. that'll that'll ruin yeah. bologna mm-hmm. for me. So I'm not gonna look that up. I, uh, this is a segment where John goes down a rabbit hole. Yeah, uh, he's trying. We're gonna we're things. gonna keep things on on uh, on task though. Uh, state convention. We've we've warned you. Mm. We're gonna talk about this a lot. Do not show me whatever you have found. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you that. Um, you can eat it with a fork. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> right. That's funny. Uh, so uh, state convention, just have these dates on your calendar, November 4th through uh, – goodness, I'm about to really confuse you. Stop. December 4th through 6th in Hot Springs at the convention center. We're going to be talking a lot about state convention in the coming weeks including the farmer's market, ag mechanics show. Uh, the mm-hmm. trade show is going to be the biggest ever, uh, and there's no there's no doubt. It's already sold out, and they're trying to make room for extra yes. spots. So uh, you want to be there. Uh, before we get to state convention, so that's December 4th through 6th, before we get to state convention, backing up a little bit, uh, in just a couple weeks we'll be down in Hot Springs uh, again for uh, resolutions. Yes. So if you're part of that process, make sure you've got uh, November 6th and 7th. Uh, That's November 6th and 7th on your calendar. Uh, And I do know that I overheard a conversation this week in the hallway. Uh, You are, even if you got your letter, um, we're asking folks to RSVP so we can have head count for that. So getting the letter is not enough. Please RSVP and and tell us that you're planning to. Then I'll add the state convention, the trade show specifically, uh-huh. uh, is only the fourth and fifth. Okay. And on the Good fourth, it opens at ten and closes at five, and I believe on the fifth, it opens at eight and closes at five thirty. Okay. Yeah. We will be in the trade show on the fifth. That's mm-hmm. Thursday at eleven a.m. on the main stage. Correct. Uh, broadcasting or recording this show. So. Yes. Come out and see us. Uh, John will have his Sharpie for autographs. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, just make plans to be in home. Friends. I will no longer, time. I should announce today, I will no longer pay you to give you one of my autographs. That <laughs> this is is a monumental that is, shift. That has stopped. And now you're just doing it for free. For just you're not, doing it for free. There's no financial it's, benefit to no, you. No, there may be in the future. Okay. But right now. But as you receive your autograph, you will not receive a dollar at the same time. (laughs) Okay. Well, that's good. It's very Uh, modest of you. This is, well, this is a big step. It's a Mm -hmm. big step. I think we've done this long enough that, you know, we've we've pumped it up and inflated it a little bit. People people know me. getting paid. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I like where your head's at. Uh, (laughs) Lastly, um, big matchup. Oh, you and I play this week, yeah. don't we? Uh, <laughs> I wasn't even going to bring up fantasy. <laughs> and then I saw that we uh, played each to. other. That's not good because I'm I'm in a quarterback situation. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know what I am? Prime to take advantage of your yeah, situation. And at the moment, I'm a little bit higher up the ranks than you are. You, I am. And if I lose to you, I could fall <laughs> deeply, <laughs> deep, like completely out of the playoff running. I'm, uh, I'm in the gutter. Yeah, my quarterback uh, uh, I drafted mm-hmm. ended up with his like tenth concussion after the second game of the season. I don't know who you have. Man. And then uh, I picked up another quarterback, which was you know consistently okay. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't bad by any means. 
But out of nowhere, they decided to just bench him and put in another quarterback <laughs> last week. So uh, I don't know if I'm starting his backup or somebody even worse off the wire <laughs> this week. And I got both my running backs hurt, a wide receiver hurt. It's just we're falling apart. I've man. got two pretty decent quarterbacks, and I'll trade you one of them Monday. <laughs> Monday. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know. Now that now that this is on my mind, I'm really gonna have to. Your OG quarterback practiced yesterday. I didn't he see did that this morning. He so. did. Wow. He I don't know why. Weekend, I do not know what he's doing. That man needs to <laughs> hang it up. I'm not I'll telling anybody that. what they need to do. But if I was in those shoes, uh, coming back wouldn't be first in my mind. No, <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. All right. So uh, just know we'll. We'll come back and tell you who uh, was the victor in that situation. But, gosh, I hope it's me. <laughs> I hope it's me, too. But at the moment, I'm not projected to win. Ooh, that makes me feel good. Um, all right. Anything else before we move on? First back's lost, but we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> no, they get lost big time. Yeah, back to where we're used to being. <laughs> <laughs> Just put it that way. How many times this year – have you considered selling all your Razorbacks, though? <laughs> I, I'm not that bad of a jump off the wagon. Somebody kind of said, so I heard I'm somebody gonna, in the office say that. I'm not, you're not going to see me burn my jerseys or I don't yeah, have any yeah. jerseys, but my hat or something. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I, I don't let my emotions get to me as much right. as I used to. Still a Razorback. That's yeah. That's funny. Uh, and good on you for not wearing jerseys as an <laughs> yeah. adult. Yeah. Wearing jerseys to football games. That's wearing, a whole topic. Wearing yeah. concert T-shirts to the concert you're going to is just, that's not me, man. <laughs> that's not me. Concert T-shirts I can let slide. Yeah. Jerseys is a little if you weird. If you're wearing a concert T-shirt of a band that's not playing at the concert, that's fine. That's fine. But, yeah, we know you're at, you know, a U2, U2. show. Yeah. You don't have yeah. to wear a T-shirt that says U2 on it. Prove that you're actually there. <laughs> I want to dive into this more. I'm probably putting my foot in my mouth right now. At a later time. (laughs) No, I just, I, it, it, really, I don't care what the topic is. When you get that passionate about it, Mm -hmm. I am intrigued because it's, you, it tends to, when you start talking that passionate about something, it tends to unleash a fury. Oh, yeah. Of grievances that you have. And I'm, I, that's what I'll I give you an example of the Jersey thing. When we we went down to New Orleans for the Sugar Bowl and we played Ohio State. Mm-hmm. All the Ohio State's fans were wearing hoodies or jerseys or hoodies with jerseys on top of them. <laughs> like it was a clear divide in the the crowd yeah. and the fan base there. Uh-huh. I thought that was just a oddly cultural visual visualization. Like, the Midwest. Yeah, I didn't expect that. Yeah. but I remember the four days I was there, I was just like, "What's going on? Why would you do that?" <laughs> like their team, yeah, I get a little it. But more proud of their okay. team. Yeah. <laughs> they, well, they, so we're historically, have they have the more reason to be. Agcast yeah. Team Spirit Edition coming soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I it can. Is. I feel it. But it I, I, I guess in the in that aspect, I'm, I also wear Farm Bureau gear while on the Arkansas Farm Bureau <laughs> Agcast. You do, yeah. Uh, and we know what uh, podcast you're on too. That's true. Yeah. That's, so I'm so. glad you brought that up because I was expecting you to tackle someone in the hall. Take it off. <laughs> <laughs> like no, Terry Tate, <laughs> Terry Tate, office linebacker. Do you, you all remember those commercials? Uh-uh. <laughs> well, Refill the coffee, Greg, <laughs> and you just tackle them at the coffee pot or whatever. <laughs> you know not to leave the copier empty, Tim, and he just like tackle them. It's pretty funny. Yeah. All uh-huh. right. Enough of that. All right. Let's talk about crop progress and quality. Uh, corn harvest progress done. We established that the yep. last week. I do have a grievance with you because rice harvest is 98% done. I was wrong. Uh, we did not get over the finish line, uh, this week, w- but we did jump up about 3%. Mm-hmm. So, uh, soybean harvest is 82% done. Moving. Uh, it is 10% jump over last week, 96% of the crop dropping leaves for what it's worth. But I mean, it's really in the, in the final days there. Uh, cotton quality, uh, so this week we stopped reporting cotton quality, um, and w- that means we're getting close to harvest. I think what I have observed, that USDA doesn't talk about this, but when they stop reporting on the quality of the crop when it gets over 50% harvested. Okay. I don't, I don't know that. We need Mike Clam or somebody to confirm that, but I think that's what I've observed. Uh, 68% of cotton crop is harvested. That's a 16% jump since last week. 
five year average is fifty eight percent, sixty six percent this week last year. Uh, so we're a little bit ahead uh, of this time last year, but uh, still a good bit ahead of the five year average. Uh, peanut quality sixty nine percent, good to excellent. Um, holding steady for the last couple weeks, really. Uh, peanut harvest is forty five percent with another eighty one percent dug. Um, and then sweet potato harvest is 64% complete, w- which is about a 13% uh, jump over uh, last week. And I want to take a minute here to talk about the drought. Um, this is a pretty serious situation and something that's been growing increasingly bad for both row crop and livestock farmers. So uh, with livestock, it really becomes an issue for a number of reasons, but prim- primarily um, because of the hay. Yeah. the feed supply and uh generally i was talking to jake cartwright uh one of the ag economists mm-hmm. here in your department about this earlier in the week and he was telling me in general it's kind of safe to assume that hayes fed thanksgiving to saint patrick's day yeah give or take um uh but what the drought has uh resulted in is farmers feeding hay much sooner than normal yes so farmers are, farmers are feeding hay right now Mm-hmm. And, and in some cases have been feeding hay for a month, um, which is really not good because it, that works on their inventory for that they're holding out. You know, they're planning on feeding just in this window of time. Yeah. Uh, another farmer told me that it impacts this drought that we're experiencing right now has impacted their ability to plant cool season grass. Mm. So that's grass that will be coming up in – some of those first months of the year next year uh, that could be fed to supplement hay. Yeah. Uh, But when that stuff can't be planted, you know, that there's an impact there. And then for row crop, you know, we're going to talk about the river levels. So as of Wednesday afternoon, yesterday, I looked at the Mississippi river was at uh, negative 8.68 feet. As a reminder, the low threshold, according to the Corps of engineers is negative five feet. Uh, the core forecast the river to hit negative nine feet on Saturday uh, and only worsen from there until at least November 7th. Their their forecast Damn. or projection only goes out to November 7th, but it's going to hit nine negative nine feet Saturday and kind of keep trickling down um, till after the election. I haven't seen any rain in the forecast. <laughs> there is some for the first weekend – in November, okay. the coming off of Is that two weeks of, from now, of, week and a half, yeah, give or take. Um, mm. There, there's some in the forecast, at least for Little Rock, mm. and basically the weekend, not this weekend, but next, um, coming the weekend after Halloween, I guess that would be, because uh, since Halloween's on a Thursday, uh, so yeah, but uh, they're not getting in a upper Midwest as a drought too. <clears throat> which we know is really what we need to be helpful. Yeah. Um, so anyway, on the river levels at least. Uh, just to get give an update um, on how quickly things can turn <laughs> with the river level, the river was above the low threshold mark on October 12th. It didn't – so it hit low again on the 13th, and we've been there since then. So, But, you know, on October 12th, we were five uh, – well – we report on this a couple weeks ago when we were five feet above. Yeah. So it's just kind of it can turn <clears> on it in an instant. Quick. Yeah. So anyway, just know we need rain. Uh, if you're at church Sunday, pray for it. Yeah. If you're the dancing type, go out in the yard and dance for it. Whatever was, you need to do. I was in Phillips County last week, and I'm pretty sure some of that dust is still in my left eye. <laughs> well, no jokes, but <laughs> like, yeah, I'm yeah, still having issues. It's uh. Even a few weeks ago when I was in Benton County, I mean, it was so dusty and dirty mm-hmm. up there. And they're having to move cows up there because their ponds are dried up. And you can see it on the vegetation there, on the trees. You can see mm-hmm. the dust on everything. My, the oak trees just in my dry. backyard are cupping up. Yeah. You know, so. Anyway. Well, you want to get to the news? Let's do it. We've been chattering for a while. We have been. Well, I have some livestock news today, which is kind of fitting for what just came up. Yeah. Specifically regarding their approval process for ingredients in animal feed. Mm-hmm. Mr. Jake Cartwright gave me this story and thought it would be a good one to, to promote. Nice. Uh, this week, the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, announced it will no longer rely on state feed control officials to help with animal food ingredient approvals. 
This comes after a Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU, between FDA and the Association of American Feed Control Officials, or also known as AAFCO, uh, expired at the beginning of October, the, the MOU that is. This in turn may may leave feed companies with no, or with, excuse me, with one less way to secure regulatory approval to sell their products. The MOU had been in place for the last 17 years, and many were shocked to see it lapse. Uh, Tracy Forfa, director of FDA Center for Veterinary Medicine, was quoted saying, the relationship between the two entities is not ending, but will be evolving. FDA will continue to participate in AAFCO meetings and collaborate with the group on feed safety. The expiration of the MOU presents an opportunity for FDA to begin a thorough evaluation of its pre-market animal food review programs in hopes of adapting a better uh, adapting to better serve public health and the needs of all stakeholders. So under the now expired pathway, AAFCO investigators worked with com- companies to compile ingredient data. Or excuse me, I should say under the previous pathway of how this worked under the MOU. Yes. Yeah. Which in, it then sent to FDA for, for scientific review. FDA would study that data and provide recommendations, which AAFCO members would then vote on. Mm-hmm. That's how that process worked. Okay. Also, historically, there had, there had been three main regulatory pathways used by FDA for reviewing animal food ingredients, and those include AAFCO's ingredient definition process, the generally recognized as safe or grass notification program, and the food additive petition process. Leah, or Lee, yeah, I think it's Lee or Leah Wilkinson, Vice President of Public Policy and Education of the American Feed Industry Association, was quoted also saying, to cut out one of these pathways leaves our industry with that void and uncertainty of how to bring new products into the market, which then ultimately impacts our agricultural producers or our companion animals. Uh, and then in August, FDA issued, try to, as a response to this, mm-hmm. a new option. In August, FDA issued a draft animal food ingredient consultation, or FIC, uh, intended as an interim replacement for the AAFCO process. Should, it should allow the agency to review plant materials, grains, or human food by, or excuse me, human food byproducts that would have previously fallen under the AAFCO process, according to the draft guidance by the agency. Under the FIC framework, FDA, and I quote, generally would not intend to take enforcement action against an ingredient or being an unimproved animal food additive if the FDA has sent an FIC consultation complete letter, provided the ingredient is used to in accordance with the terms described in the letter and there continue to be no questions of concerns about the safety of the ingredient, end quote. According to the agency press release, uh, FDA received 28 comments on this proposal, including criticism, of course, from AAFCO, mm-hmm. yeah. given that their kind of authority went away there, or control, I should say. Uh, this is a pretty long article I got from Agri Pulse, mm-hmm. a lot of detail in it, and how this process is either going to work or may work. I'm no livestock expert mm-hmm. or any expert on feed. So uh, if you want to see more information or detail, uh, there's some other associations, associations that are involved in this. Okay. Uh, so if you want more d- detail on this specifically and what may come of it, you can find that article at agrapulse.com. All right. Well, it uh, seems like an important issue, not only for uh, farmers, but, it, uh, you know, they say companion animals. So yeah. I assume the household pets. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I don't know, from what I understand is that each state has an authority to control that that feed and how mm-hmm. it comes in or out or what's introduced and what's not uh, with that aspect of it going away. Mm-hmm. Now it's up to FDA. That process is going to slow tremendously. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> so uh, it'll be interesting to see how be. that plays out. Well, you've heard us talk a lot about on farm income this year, and it uh, really all comes back to low commodity prices and high input costs. Uh, high interest rates, and a number of other issues. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, thanks to George Jarrett at Talk Business and Politics, we have some statewide data uh, to get the local perspective. Um, The Rural and Farm Finance Policy Analysis Center projects that income decline for farmers in Arkansas uh, or income will decline for Arkansas farmers for the second straight year in 2024. But how much of a decline will we see? Well, 
The center projects, based on its work with ag economists from the U of A, uh, that Arkansas's net uh, 2024 net farm income is expected to drop by 10% from 2023 mm. levels. Uh, that 10% represents just over a billion dollars in real farm income. That's a lot of money. Uh, to add some context here, farm incomes are projected to fall on the national level this year, and this is something we've covered on the show before, but nationally, uh, we expect a 6% reduction. Arkansas's decline is 4% deeper at, at 10%. Yeah. Uh, farm cash receipts represent the total revenue uh, a farm receives from the state, uh, from sorry, from the sale of its agricultural products, government program payments, and private insurance payments. Uh, this year, total cash receipts for Arkansas will decline by 2% or $317 million. Livestock receipts increased 5% or $360 million, while crop receipts tumbled 10% or $580 million. Yeah, uh, something uh, we've talked a lot a, a lot about here, and we'll talk about again later in the show today is the near record record yields this season have pushed commodity prices even lower. Uh, we also planted more cotton than we have in more than a decade here in the state. Mm-hmm. Plus, our three million plus acres of soybeans are projected projected to produce a record yield. Uh, all this is to say. There's a lot of crop without a ton of change in uh, demand, so yeah. supply and demand uh, that we talk about a lot. Uh, Ryan Loy, a friend of the AgCast, shared some potential positive news uh, that is on the horizon. He says fertilizer, pesticides, and fuel oils are all expected to fall by 9% year over year, Boy. finally stabilizing after the market shocks of, let me see, COVID, supply chain issues, trucker strikes, mm. and the war in Ukraine. Um, you can see uh, full details uh, of of the report by searching for the fall 2024 Arkansas Farm Income Outlook uh, online. Um, there's a lot more data points here, but I think the headline, the takeaway is a 10% farm income reduction in the state of Arkansas. Uh, but when you put that next to the 6% projected yep. nationally, I mean, that's really stark. And a 9% in those expenses would be, doesn't seem like a big number, but that'd be huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, <clears throat> I mean, uh, you you kind of hinted on it. The we And we've talked about it here before, is that we have a huge supply of, say, grain out uh-huh. there, not within the country, but also globally. Uh-huh. Then you also have a competitor such as Brazil that's producing more than we are mm-hmm. at a cheaper price. Mm-hmm. And we're also about to pull out another record potential record crop i don't i mean i hate to say it but i I don't see it getting any better anytime soon yeah when it comes to commodity prices yeah there's a simple supply and demand there depending on where you're talking about and we're going to cover the WASD here in a a little bit that talks about world supply of agricultural products um there's a bright spot here and there um but it's 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 not uh what I would say overwhelmingly positive picture on, on the supply and demand mm-hmm. front. And I'll add to what Ryan said there was that I think it was in our soybean division meeting back in July. Uh-huh. Somebody asked him, like, what advice can you give us as farmers right now? And he said, man, look at the historical trends of when fertilizer, chemical, pesticide prices are, fuel, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. historically when they are low, lowest within the year, uh-huh. and try to book those prices at that time. You know, yeah. If you can't control the price that you're selling your product at, at least try to control the price at which you're buying your inputs yeah. at if you can yeah, yeah. that's well, not going to fix everything but i think this is an important topic like i said we've talked about nationally this is the first look at the state numbers i've seen mm. um it might be a good idea to try and get ryan or or his partner hunter we yeah. had ryan on as part of their um act as part of their podcast uh, and maybe talk about these numbers a little bit more in depth and maybe yeah. talk about some recommendations. Yeah, that'd be good. That and plus, we don't want to make one jealous of the other, so we probably need to bring That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's take a uh, short break and hear about issue one. We face a critical shortage of skilled workers like welders, plumbers, and mechanics. Our rural communities, especially farmers and ranchers, feel the impact. Uh-huh. 
Join Arkansas Farm Bureau and vote yes on issue one, supporting scholarships for vocational education and providing the training needed for good paying jobs. Farm Bureau members support issue one because we believe in strengthening our state's workforce and our rural way of life. Vote yes on issue one. Political ad paid for by Arkansas Farm Bureau for rural jobs. All right. Uh, I got one more story. Okay. As usual. Yep. Uh, here at Arkansas Farm Bureau, we've been doing our best to push for a new farm bill. Although the 2018 farm bill was extended, it hasn't helped to alleviate the financial stress on farmers due to you know severely low commodity prices and incredibly high uh, production costs like we were just talking about mm-hmm. at the end of your story. However, we uh, have also been pushing for economic assistance as well, and we are hearing rumblings that assistance may be coming. Oh, wow. That would be great. So Representative Trent Kelly, Republican out of Mississippi, and co-sponsor, Arkansas's very own Congressman Crawford, uh, have introduced the Farmer Assistance and Revenue Mitigation Act of 2024, also known as the Farm Act. This would uh, provide emergency assistance to producers of eligible commodities for which the expected revenue in crop year 2024 is below the projected per acre cost of production. Acres planted or prevented from being planted in 2024 to the following crops would be eligible for assistance. Those crops would include barley, corn, cotton, dry peas, grain sorghum, lentils, large chickpeas, oats, peanuts, rice, small chickpeas, soybeans, other oil seeds, and wheat. Uh, it's also, I should mention, it's great to see Arkansas's Congressman Crawford co-sponsoring this bill. Mm-hmm. Uh, Absolutely. And uh, no need to, you know, Arkansas Farm Bureau thanks him tremendously, to say the least. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, And then, if implemented, the payment would be calculated uh, in the following way. This payment would equal projected cost minus projected returns times eligible acres times 60%. And to be specific, projected cost is the per acre cost published by USDA's Economic Research Service for corn, soybeans, wheat, cotton, rice, sorghum, oats, and barley, and otherwise as determined by the secretary in a similar manner. Projected returns for this for the same crops are determined by multiplying the projected 2024 marketing year average price published in the WASD by the 10-year national average yield for the eligible commodity and otherwise as determined by the secretary as well. Mm-hmm. And then eligible acres consist of 100% of the acres planted to an eligible commodity plus 50% of the acres prevented uh, from being planted to an eligible commodity in crop year 2024, as reported to FSA by the producer. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I should add, with respect to payment limitations, persons or entities that derive less than 75% of their income from farming, ranching, for- or forestry are subject to an overall limitation of 175000 Okay. Persons for or entities that derive 75% or more of their income from farming, ranching, or forestry are subject to an overall limitation of $350,000 in assistance. Okay. Now, this information was sourced from a Southern Ag Today article and uh, where there is plenty of more detail that I haven't talked about here today just because of time. But yeah. in that article, there's a breakdown, a table breakdown per commodity of what these payments could look like. Mm-hmm. So if you want to see that breakdown in a little bit more detail and description of this particular uh, development, please visit southernagtoday.org. Okay, that's good. Uh, what's interesting, number one, is this is great news. Yeah. Like you said, thanks to Congressman Crawford for having uh, co-sponsored this legislation. Yep. I mean, it's great. Um, it's what we've been asking for. Um, I, I'll make a note, too. We're, we're going to talk about the WASI, mm-hmm. uh, and we're going to talk about a couple of these average okay. uh, average. Uh, prices cool. um so that could you could really start doing some back of the napkin math um by the time this episode though yeah. really um and and I, I just think i want to acknowledge the fact that uh you introduced an equation uh into this show because <laughs> i'm sitting here <laughs> reading this and i'm kind of getting yeah ugh, jittery a little bit well that, you know but, I, I said it in a way that it's not it, it's it's on print in a different yeah. fashion does that yeah. make sense yeah so not to get too detailed and professorish here yeah. teaching wise projected the projected cost minus projected returns and that equation you make that that first Whatever that, that number is. Yeah. Whatever that number is, then you multiply it by eligible acres, multiplied by 60%. Yeah. 
So, oh, believe me, my my high school math teacher was in my head saying, "Do the parentheses." Yeah, first. if it's yeah. in parentheses, <laughs> yeah. do that first. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, right. the point is, is like that's a pretty simple way to figure that out. And then you've got the eligibility requirements down there um, that kind of tell you, hey, if you're you know if if you've got less than seventy five percent of your income coming from the farm. You've got a hundred hundred seventy five thousand dollar cap. If it's more three hundred fifty thousand, yeah. Cap. And then we should also say this isn't hasn't been voted on. Oh, good, it, it good is call. What filed? I think maybe no, not even not, filed. Not even yeah. filed. So this is just a a bill that's out there that could be filed, mm-hmm. that could be voted on, and it could potentially become law. Thank you for saying that. I got a little ahead of us. Didn't yeah. I? So just I I I think, and I'm not no, I don't want to jinx it, but I. I I think this is good news. We talked that. Yeah, if it's the right direction. I mean, Mm -hmm. we've gone from asking for help. Arkansas Farm Bureau has asked for help, Mm -hmm. and and let me. This would obviously affect, uh, impact farmers nationally. But we've been asking for help. This is the first sort of definition of that help that we've seen. Yeah. Um, But John and I talked about this earlier, and we see ourselves obviously bringing this story to you today. There's three milestones that we plan to report on here, just so you know. It's today, which is, hey, there's some information out. that uh, There's a bill yeah. that's kind of floating around there. The second milestone would be when it's filed. Mm-hmm. We'll let you know when the legislation has been filed. And then third would be uh, the, the, the result, the yeah. outcome. So if it's passed, if it's not, if there were changes along the way. Yeah. Uh, so you can, you can bet on us. Hit, you know, coming and giving you information in, in yeah. those and also three keep ways. in mind that they're not in session right now, right? That's right. So, and they're not going to come back until after the election. That's right. So, what's election November second, third, the like fifth, that. fifth? Uh, and I think they may come back the twelfth. Yeah. So even if this does get passed, a payment's not going to more than likely come out until next year. It's going to be a little while. Yeah. Potentially, uh, that's just a guess. But what this is trying to do is put some next year's two months away. Put some funds out because what's going to happen is when a when a new farm bill is passed, that's going to take a 2026? year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be twenty twenty six before, it, and that's mm-hmm. like really saying if if we pass a farm bill in the next couple of months. Yeah. So I think that's trying. This is trying to address some of that too. So uh, also uh, uh, not to get off too track, but uh, too far off track. But this will be the first time. At least I've been involved with talking about an election year on the podcast. Yeah, how about that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, a lot going on. Uh, all right, as we start to wrap up the the news, it's time to take a look at the October Wazi report. We've talked about this a couple times already today, where we get a better look at grain grain inventory across the world, but also U.S. production data. Uh, this month's twenty four twenty five U.S. corn outlook is for smaller supplies larger exports, and reduced ending stocks. I think that's where we want to go, isn't it, John? Mm-hmm. Think about supply and demand. Yep. Projected uh, beginning stocks for 2024-25 uh, corn are 52 million bushels, lower based on the uh, grain stocks report. But corn production is forecast at just over 15 billion bushels, which is a 17 million uh bushel increase from last month. Mm. Uh, now, that jump is credited to... Uh, a slight two tenths bushel increase in yield uh, to nearly 184 bushels per acre. Uh, remember, this is on a on a national scale here. The harvested area for grain is unchanged at 82.7 million acres. Uh, USDA says the average corn price season average corn price received by producers is unchanged at four dollars and ten cents per bushel. Globally, coarse grain production is down. So, if you wanted to get into that equation, John went over four dollars and ten cents per bushel is your is your corn price yep. as of this Wednesday. That, that kind of reference. Uh, the outlook for twenty four twenty five U.S. rice this month is for slightly larger supplies, unchanged domestic use and exports, and slightly higher ending stocks. So, we're going the wrong direction on the supply chain, the supply piece here. The NAS October crop production report raised 24 and 25 production by a tenth uh, million hundredweight uh, to just under 220 million hundredweight, uh, all on a higher yield. The average all rice yield is forecast at 75, uh, 7,590 pounds per acre, 
uh, up two pounds from last month. Long grain production is forecasted just under 167 million hundred weight, mm-hmm. and combined medium and short grain production at 53 million uh, hundred weight. Uh, soybean production is uh, forecasted over four billion bushels uh, at this point, which is down four million on lower yields. Mm-hmm. Uh, the harvested area is unchanged at just over six, uh, 86 million acres. Uh, in the U.S., soybean yield is product, projected at 53 bushels per acre nationally. That's down a tenth of a bushel uh, from the September forecast, with lower production partly offset by slightly higher beginning stocks. Uh, supplies are lowered 2 million bushels to just under 5 billion uh, bushels there. The U.S. season average soybean price for 24-25 is unchanged at $10.80 per bushel. There's your first number in that equation for soybeans. Uh, compared to last month, the U.S. cotton balance sheet for 24-25 uh, shows lower production, mill use, and exports. NAS reduced the estimate of U.S. all cotton production by slightly over 300,000 bales to just over 14 million in its October crop production report, primarily reflecting the damage from uh, Hurricane Helene. Mm. Uh, the forecast wrapping up here, the WASD, the forecast for 2024 red meat and poultry production is raised from last month as higher beef production more than offsets lower production elsewhere. Uh, total egg production is lowered on recent production data and a slower than previously expected growth rate in the laying flock, uh, which is interesting because uh, there has been some talk about AI impact yeah. on egg prices in the news. Uh, the forecast for 2025 is higher production across the board for red meat and poultry. So we'll have to see uh, see what that is. I can tell you that in a lot of cases, that in-state farm income decline would have been lower had it not been for beef prices oh, yeah. where they are. Yeah, beef went so, through what it did what, last year before because of the drought. The drought, yeah. A lot, a lot of the herd was decreased. Yeah. Well, there, there you go with supply and demand High price per head of cattle got a little bit better because there was less out there. Yep. Now, one thing I did want to say, mm-hmm. uh, there was some mention about higher beginning stocks. Did I goof? No, 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 Okay, no, no. okay. I was just going to say that tells me that we're not exporting um, what we need yeah. to. If that if that beginning stock's still up there, they didn't they didn't they didn't send the exports out that they projected that yeah. they were going to last month. There's some more data in this report about, and and Tyler Oxner will have it in his weekly futures update yeah. email tomorrow. Mm-hmm. But there's some more data in there on who's buying and who's not. Yeah, and and um, I will tell you, China looks to be buying again. Uh, but as for this month, but anyway, it's pretty interesting um, to see where the export markets uh are going and, and headed right now yeah i don't know uh, i, I can get watch. on my soapbox but i they've, know they've got to find some more markets for yep. those exports the exports have got have got to be there have got to step whoever, up. whoever they is yes yeah. do so <laughs> get on it <laughs> all right brian i think we're finally done a lot of a <clears throat> lot of lot of information yeah this week all right well since we didn't do it last week i know you guys are feeling withdrawal so mm-hmm. if it is time to you know, I, I didn't know what I was missing last week. I, <laughs> I, 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 I knew there was something. I just now I know it was this. Now you know something wasn't right. We need to work up a supply and demand sounder for the board. Okay, I think for when we get to talking about supply and demand, you know, we used to make a real big deal of that. We kind of just kind of taking it for granted. The t-shirt idea is still out there. The little uh, bumper stickers. That's true. I wonder if that is the voice for it, or if it's something else. I don't know. But okay. We need to work supply on and demand. Supply <laughs> and demand. <laughs> anyway, all, all right. right. Trivia. We don't know who's first. Yes. Why don't you go first? Okay. Once again, thanks to our uh, random trivia generator. Mm. Uh, yep. I have these categories mm. for you, and, these categories and I will tell you, <clears throat> I've already picked one for you because I have to. Oh, okay. Um, We've just been told what we're gonna do. Yes, today. I'm doing it because it's it's gonna be dedicated to Matthew. If I didn't do it, he'd be mad that I didn't do it. Okay, I appreciate um, that. And we don't remember whose turn it is anyway. True. So yeah. it's Brian's turn. So there's there's arts, science, nice. <clears throat> arts, science, entertainment, general geography, history. So, do you want me to pick the first one 
Yeah. And then go yeah, from there. Yeah. Why not? <clears throat> All right. First time for the ad cast. Arts. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Not like I was going to get either one of them right. <clears throat> right. The odds just <laughs> fell completely. Really, okay. Really bad. All right. This is for you, Matthew. What spice is the most essential and valuable commodity in the Dune universe? <laughs> the Dune universe. Oh, my gosh. Uh, it starts with the M, right? Uh, Malang, Marang, Mar- Look at you. You're getting good. Uh, Keep going. Man. I, I can tell you, you're you're warm. Yeah, I know. I just don't remember how they pronounce it. Um, The spice mm, is the most. Is it real or is it fictional? It's fictional. It's fictional. Okay. It's not something you would have watched or read because you haven't even watched Lord of the Rings. I haven't watched it or read it. I can tell you. I will say Dune is the reason Star Wars exists. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. True. Melange. Bingo. Wow. Wow. It came I to am. him. Bam. He is a commodities guy. So I, I am mean, impressed. There you go. Yes, seriously. All right. You can see the spice, you know, twinkle and glitter in the air. You oh, can. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Glittering on the and on it, the sand. And dunes, if you consume so. a lot of it, it turns your eyes blue and you can also traverse <clears throat> the universe. <laughs> I'm so oh. proud of you. So Look at him. You live, I know you love Dune. Too. No, it's, it's a very it's, rich it's story. up there for it's you. Yeah. fantastic. It's, okay. uh, it's really well it, it, I, I will say one thing about doing that pr- impresses me most. Uh-huh. And I think it's probably something you'll read about with the description of that story the most is that it has almost every aspect of civilization in it, whether it's politics, economics, yes. just, oh, um, that's fascinating. Uh, social demographics, yeah. you know, you name it. Mm-hmm. And it deals with all those things throughout this story yeah. that also was the base for a Star Wars story. Mm. There's well, spiritual references yeah. to it. There's religion this, is another you know, one. Wow. Yeah. A, a messiah is gonna come. It's 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 wow. very it's very That's rich. Cool. Very okay. rich story. Um all right, I might have to check it out. I got art right. <laughs> Look at you go. <laughs> Look at me. Look at you go. That's hilarious. Okay. All right. Science, entertainment, geography, history, general. I'm gonna step out there with general. General, it is. Man, I, you couldn't have picked an easier one. No. What board game's tokens include a rope, a lead pipe, and a candlestick? I'll, I'll Clue? Get, okay. Clue. <laughs> I was yeah. about to say, surely you can answer that. All right, you guys are two for two today. <laughs> I'm about, <laughs> damn, I am proud of you. I like it. All right. Let's go for the trifecta. What's it going to be? What are the options? Now you got science, entertainment, geography, and history. I know it, she is a temptress for you. What science or history. geography? The history? Yeah, she is. I kind of want to throw you a softball and do entertainment, though. Oh, okay. Well, I was hoping you'd pick that one. Let's yeah. do entertainment. What was Ward Cleaver's occupation on the TV show Leave It to Beaver? Uh, oh, don't. Uh, mm, I'm looking at him coming home from work. They didn't have like accountants and attorneys back then. He was a traveling salesman. Nope. Was he? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when he said that, it made me think of like a door to door vacuum or Tupperware. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> that's what was. Those guys made a lot of appearances back in the day. Oh, uh, man. I'm going to, for some reason, I want to say plumber, but I'm not really. No, he wore a suit. No, uh, he was in advertisement. No. No. He was engineering. You can just keep you guessing. Can't just if you keep want. guessing. Tell us. He was an accountant. My goodness. Man. Sure. Right. You should have trusted him. I, I seriously did not. He's got a good yeah. poker face. Yeah, he does. Uh, <laughs> but to your point about traveling, the number of traveling salesmen that come through Mayberry and the, that, I mean, it was basically a trope for that show. I mean, mm. it was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah. All right. So he was an accountant. Ward Cleaver, the accountant. Ward Cleaver, the accountant. Boy, boy. What's that? Uh, that? what's that movie with Uncle Rico in it? Uh, Napoleon Dynamite. Napoleon yeah. Dynamite, when he's trying to sell Tupperware. Tupperware. And he's <laughs> trying to tell that lady, show that lady how strong they are. <laughs> and he puts it under the yeah. tire of his van and runs over it. So yeah. It just break. smashes yeah. it. And then he just leaves. <laughs> 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 he doesn't say anything else to her. It breaks, and then he just leaves. Heather and I got to talk about Tupperware parties the other day. 
she was recalling her mom going to Tupperware parties. Mm. Oh yeah. yeah, they were they were a big deal. Yeah, it's so funny that you bring him up. It's so weird weird the way the world works. Yeah, uh-huh. I just saw a post yesterday on social social media. Mm-hmm. It's someone has done a meme. They uh, uh, it's AI generated, but it's <laughs> it's Uncle Rico. <laughs> He's the new. Uh, the new quarterback for the Jets. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> he throw that football across, over that mountain. Yeah, over that mountain. Yeah. Yeah, he can. But it's quite funny. But he takes that kid's steak and hits Napoleon with it yeah, off yeah. his bicycle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a clip the other day that said that was real. Like they didn't uh, expect uh, the steak oh, to hit him in the face. Uh, oh, <laughs> and really? And Pedro, who was riding the bike with him, he's like, it's all I can do not to laugh. Oh, my gosh. Because he knew what kind of gold <laughs> moment they had just captured. That's so funny. That's pretty funny. That's a classic. It is. An instant classic. It is. I think they call it. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, uh, that wraps up the news for this week. Thanks for following along with the Arkansas I guess We're grateful for you taking the time to watch and listen. Absolutely. Remember, you can catch new episodes of the show every Thursday afternoon. Find video episodes on Facebook and YouTube and listen to audio version wherever you listen to uh, podcasts. You know. <laughs> Did you get through it there? Almost. All didn't. right. Well, make sure to subscribe and leave us a review when you have a few extra minutes. The Arkansas Icast is brought to you by Arkansas Farm Bureau. I'm Jason Brown. And I'm John McMinn. And we'll see you next week.